Hi, welcome back to Comic Book Gallery. I'm your host, Joaquin. Today's episode is Tales from the Vegas Short Box. So I found uh, Rob Liefeld's miniseries of X-Force, and I have one through six, The Legend Returns. I think they're talking about Shadowstar. Just saying. So, while I thought this series was, it was an okay read. I mean, it has, it has some cool points. I mean, I remember when the hype about this is when, at the time, when they first relaunched this. Oh, look at that. two ninety nine price tag, people. Remember those days? Those days we could get a book for $3? Yeah. So, I thought I would uh, talk more about his art and his style. Now... Let's start with this cover. First of all, I love it. I like this cover. Let me get a pen so I can have my little pointer. The only problem, the only thing I, I, I thought wasn't... Let me make sure I'm not marking that. Oops. All right. Let's do this for safety. Is right here. He doesn't seem like he has a short... Um, like right here, you can see how he has his forearm. He doesn't really have a forearm... That, and it doesn't even look like he's got any elbows. Like, I don't even know what all this is. And what happens is, when you get somebody, and not just somebody, but most comic book artists like to exaggerate on how many muscles we actually have. And, you know, instead of six-pack, they give nine packs. And, you know, they put all these muscles that are just unnecessary. And the reason why I'm going to say they're unnecessary because... You know, these are the types that you should probably use when, when you have Colossus. Those type of characters. You know, the Juggernaut is not just... Is strong, but he's strong because of his crystal. Now, he's a big dude as it is. So, he's got some bulk weight to him. But, you know, it wasn't really necessary to show Cable this bulk out. And while Shadowstar... It fits into his character to his a degree, but enough about that. So at least he got this right with Boom Boom. He's got Dominic, and then they're foreshadowing um, Caliban. So let's just look inside. Now, one of the criticism on his art is that he couldn't draw feet at the beginning, and that was true. But I, what I noticed on this series, he started to make up for it. And even though later on, he's he's renowned for having some bad cover art. You know, the Captain America, a couple other things. Oh, some Wolverine covers. But I was enjoying the artwork on here, you know. He's got his own particular style. I think after a while, he relies too much on just... Um, instead of using this individual style that he had created and creating other things he starts to go back to creating stuff that um making work that he's done before similar and this is not an example of that but oh here's another example of he's like see i could draw feet so overall you know not bad i mean he's getting there but these type of figures he's drawn before, and basically what they are, are just little replicas of Deadpool. Again, with the over-exaggeration on the muscle. It's like, not everybody has to be ripped. Because what happens is, when you do that, everything just blends in and nothing pops out anymore. So, they meet up with Shadow, Shadow Star. And he's training with these monks. And, you know, they're going back into Cable's history, which I thought was cool. But here's the part that I thought. <laughs> it's supposed to be a sword. This, I don't even know what that is. It's like, you know, Sting from Lord of the Rings. I was like, what, is this a hobby blade? <laughs> I mean, come on now. What kind of sword is that? So other than that sword, you know, I've been really, like, like I said, I like his art and the series. I thought this was a cool cover. I might try to paint this. When I was younger, 
I actually did an earlier um, painting of his work, and we had to break it down into two 18 by 24 panels. And I actually did it of Shatterstar when he was fighting Sauron. So a woman offered me like 50 bucks for it for her, her kid. And I looked at my teacher and I go, does that sound like a fair price? He's like, I don't know. It's your work. I go, sounds good to me. He's like, yeah, it's a fair price. So I ended up selling her this Shatter Star with Sauron. So I don't know if she still has it, but um, it'd be cool if she did. But anyways, this is a good cover. And I like the perspective with uh, seeing Cannonball on the... Um, Reflection on the sword. If you notice, Shadowstar does look similar to uh, Cable a little bit. Like all his characters, in one sense, with the faces, he starts to blend them in. It looks similar. Like, here's a... Now, let me see if there's anything in here I really want to show you. So they're going into the history of uh, Cable and I... And the group that he's part of, like, it starts with an A, I can't remember them offhand, but they go into their history and basically, you know, um, Cannonball doesn't really want anything to do with it. He's always trying to, you know, keep to himself. And Cable here is, is uh, talking to them and they're having all these flashback scenes. And I did like this, you know, I did like this. I thought it was cool. Fleshing out Cable more. And here's where they're putting back the band together. Here. Now, this is what I want to talk about. Again, I like the action on this cover. I even like the colors. Um, the only thing is, is that they're all dressed in yellow. So, I mean, that's kind of cool for um, their uniform sense. But sometimes stuff just blends in. Like when you have all this yellow right here. But he did a good job of breaking it up. So. I'm not going to like harp on that. But I did like this cover. I like the action. Thought it looked cool. But look at these two faces right here. They look similar. And. When. When I've been helping out like high school kids how to draw and develop their own style. The first thing I tell them is just look up random faces on the internet now and then draw your character similar to that person. And try not to make it look like that person exactly and give it your own touch. And more important, stay away from celebrities because while you think that that's a pretty face and sometimes it can work, um, it, it takes away from your creativity. And nine times out of ten, you could find a better reaction or a better face by using just some random picture that you that you catch. So I think at one point, um, they are uh, trying to figure out where. So, yeah, Cannonball, oh, I thought this was a cool scene right here. Cannonball, you know, gives it to Cable. But there was something with Boom Boom. I thought, well, I'm not sure if it was in this issue. They're like, thanks, Joaquin. Why don't you do your, do your homework ahead? Hey, man, I'm trying. Just can't remember. So, you know, here's a theme. He's always, you know, in the first issue where uh, Cable took over the New Mutants, Cannonball almost died, so he's, he's, sometimes he goes back too much. Oh, look at this game. Atmosphere, the DVD board game. Mwah. Anyways. Alright, right here, cool cover. Uh, you got the classic Wolverine, Shadow Star, Deadpool. And you, we have a crossover, we have the Fantastic Four because what they're dealing with so Wolverine is tracking down uh, uh, Caliban. And sometimes my gripe with, with people who write Wolverine is sometimes they, uh, sometimes I should stop saying sometimes so much, is they overdo it on his, you know, on his rage. You know, like 
he comes over here. It, it and granted, Caliban, Caliban, you know, started it, and so Wolverine, you know, gave it back. But there are a lot of times where Wolverine just goes in there and starts fighting, and it just takes away from the character, or at least what other writers have built up about him. So here's Caliban. And I want to say, um, right. this is right after, not right after, but at one point, Apocalypse had transformed Caliban into this, into this creature to enhance his powers. And I want to say he was death at one point, or war, but he was one of the two. And so he's there, and he's not letting up on Caliban, and Shadowstar comes in. And this is what I didn't like. So Shadowstar comes in here. And, you know, they start fighting. Okay, fine. One defensive move, whatever. But just to... They always do this. Have unnecessary fights with other heroes. Just to have a fight with another hero. And then... Cable breaks it up. So, it's like, eh, I really like that. So now they're talking about how they're there to, to get to... Get to um, Caliban, he's saying, I'm trying to rescue Caliban. Then you see this dude and this face that looks so similar. I mean, it, it looks like Lex Luthor almost. And the armor style is so similar too. So he pops in and they're going at it. And then Strife shows up. And I always did like Strife. I thought it was an interesting concept. And I did like his Freedom Fighters or the Mutant Liberation Front. I thought that was cool. Nice little cover. So here's some foreshadowing to the Fantastic Four. Again, I like the cover. And now we're going into um, where you have the uh, Imperial Guards. For the Shi'ar Empire. Eh, I like the art on that. I thought that was cool. Again, I've seen him draw this style of face again. I mean, similar face. Like, these two look, these two look so similar. You just put this guy with a goatee. And it just darkened his eyebrows. So, you know. It's little things like that. I understand. They're working. You know, they're trying to get these pages out. And they're no Jack Kirby. So... I'll give them that. But at the same time, with everything that's going digital now, I mean, all you have to do is just put an outline and then fill out the rest. But I am not going to... I'm going to get off my soapbox. Because I've never done a book, I'm not going to criticize on how long it takes and what they should do. I'm just going to criticize uh, the artwork. Again, I like the splash page. I thought it was really good. Um, overall... There are certain, there are times when he's had really good artwork. And then here it is. She takes off her helmet and she now is Strife. So they wrap it up because we're getting on 13 minutes. So overall, it seems like throughout his career, he's, he's, he's very hit and miss. So when, when he hits it, like when he first came on the scene... And continuing with his style, he does a good job. You know, he, he overlaps on some of the facial features. And he didn't know how to draw feet that well. But he seems like to have made that correction here. He went away with a lot of the of the big shoulder pads. I mean, he still has them. But they're not as big as they used to be. And, you know, the pouches, that's his thing. You know, I'm not going to... Not gonna say anything like about the pouches, you know, because Batman utility belt is basically a whole bunch of pouches. But you know, maybe not everybody needs pouches. So I hope you enjoyed this little breakdown of Rob Liefeld's art. If you're new to the channel, hello, and I hope you subscribe. My recording schedule is Monday through Friday is comic book gallery videos, and my name is is the name of my business. So comic book gallery, a different way of looking at art on Thursdays. I do sketchbook Thursdays and I showcase my art as well as uh, promoting my Patreon page where I, 
I have a program where I'm teaching little kids how to draw. So if you like that, you have kids and you want to learn how to draw, come check out my channel. You can also check out my playlist and you will see those videos on Patreon along with the other subject matters that I've covered. So that'll do it, people. Hope you're enjoying your day. Take care.